So I just read an incredible, incredible story from the book Behave, and I had to tell you about it. So this is my co-working space here. It's in Tulum, and uh, I was reading this book called Behave from Robert Sapolsky. It is, he's a neuroscientist, neuropsychologist, uh, behaviorist. And in this book, he talked about adult neurogenesis and the hippocampus. Now, for those of you who don't know what this is, the hippocampus is the area of the brain which has many, many functions, but it is mostly involved in memory formation, memory consolidation, how memories are built up while you are sleeping, how memories are consolidated from your short-term memory to your long-term memory. So let's say you hear a fact, some phone number or someone's name. It's called declarative memory, something that is factual. Those memories are first in your working memory. You know, while, while you're listening to this video, your working memory is being stimulated. And this rests here in the prefrontal cortex and other parts of the cortex. But the way working memory becomes long-term memory is when we are sleeping, we are dreaming, and that is how memory is consolidated. And the hippocampus is one of the areas that is mostly involved in memory consolidation. So having neurogenesis, the creation of new neurons in the hippocampus is obviously important. So today's video is about the story of adult neurogenesis in the hippocampus. And the reason that this is important is because when you learn something, when you do something over and over and you are repeating something, and then you are sleeping, you know, you're studying for a test or you're studying uh, something for your career, something that you want to become really good at, you want to master. So you're going to do something over and over. And while you sleep, especially during the REM cycle of your sleep, when you are dreaming, as well as other parts of your sleeping cycles, memories are being built up. And some of these are emotional memories. Some of these are declarative memories, like memories for facts. But having new neurons generated in the hippocampus is obviously surely important. The first time this was put forward in the literature of neuroscience was around 1965, when Dr. Altman figured this out. He proposed that there is a way to create new neurons in the hippocampus. Now, before that, the theory was that there is a limit of neurons that we get at birth, you know, humans, mice, cats, dogs, snakes, everyone. And then after the age of two years old, three years old, you have this thing called pruning, where the neurons you have become less and less because of what you sort of interaction you have with the world. So you, you are born with a certain number of neurons and those neurons go up, they rise, but then there's a pruning stage where a bunch of neurons get destroyed, they, they, they deteriorate. But it was thought that at this time, there is no way that there are more neurons in the brain. So as a child, it stops, that's it. But then Dr. Altman comes and he's like, you know what, there is adult neurogenesis in the hippocampus of a mouse. He, he was studying mice. And everyone in the field thought he was full of shit, right? They, they all thought, this guy is a, is, a, is a quack. He was also not very well established in the neuroscience field. So that was a problem, right? He was like a, a, a junior guy. So they thought he was a, a, a crackhead and they sort of dismissed him. And his career went to shit because a guy named Dr. Rakic, who was the top guy in this field, in the learning and memory field, and his entire life's work rested in the fact that there is no neurogenesis in the adult hippocampus or in any part of the brain for that matter. And so Rakic said, this guy, Dr. Altman, is full of shit, so no one listened to Dr. Altman. So his career got destroyed. Then Michael Kaplan came in, who was a bit higher up in, in his credentials, and he also found adult neurogenesis. He's like, look, I used a better technique. I found it. But then Rakic, this cunt, still dismissed it. He didn't believe it. And, and then even Michael Kaplan's career got destroyed from this case. And this went on for a while. It was like 10 years. This field basically did not advance for 10 years because of the fact that these scientists who were proposing these very rebellious theories 
were pussies, right? They were pussies. They uh, kind of gave up and they quit neuroscience. But then Fernando Nodebaum at Rockefeller University, Dr. Nodebaum, he comes in and he's already very well established in the field. And he shows that there is adult neurogenesis in the hippocampus of the mouse. And he, he did this tremendous, very, very high level technique, very advanced technique. And he left no argument to this theory. And then Rakic had to accept it. And then but definitely go look this up. It's in chapter five of the book Behave that I'm reading right now. It's a brilliant, brilliant book. I'll take a photo with this book for you guys so you can see what, what it is. So now Rakic has no way to argue that adult neurogenesis is happening. But then he says, well, what good is that? It's a mouse. Who cares if there's new neurons in the hippocampus of the mouse? But then it was shown in a primate. Then it was shown in a human. And not only was it shown that the new neurons are there, but they actually make an effect in day-to-day -day life. So now, why is this even important, right? What causes neurogenesis? And I'm going to get into how you can improve your memory consolidation, how you can improve how well you remember things, what contributes to all this. And then I'm going to give you some learning lessons from this story. So first and foremost, what actually contributes to increasing hippocampal volume in the human? Well, one study that they've done is with London taxi drivers, where they showed that because they had to remember, right? This is before Uber, by the way, right? This is before GPS, before all of this GPS shit, where we don't have to remember where to go. The London taxi driver's hippocampal volume, right? The number of neurons that they have, the, the actual volume of this part of the brain, you can measure that volume. And they found that London taxi drivers' hippocampal volume is higher than the average population of London. And they also showed this with New York taxi drivers. And it's brilliant papers, really, really good papers, published in good journals. And then the repetition of remembering things like maps and where to go and left and right and direction, all of this is where the hippocampus comes in. And that is why the hippocampal volume was higher in these taxi drivers for New York and London. And after the GPS system came out, they showed that the difference in hippocampal volume is no longer higher for these taxi drivers, which is like super cool finding, right? This is the control. And they found that. Now, why is that important to us? So in my life, I'll give you my personal experience and then also what we know in science. The way to remember things better, to be able to remember names and where you put your keys and sometimes remembering people's names is super important because that is how you show love and, and care towards them, right? If you don't remember someone's name after you met them five minutes ago, it's, it's rude. It's kind of, uh, it, it's not great in terms of making friends. What I found in my life and what the literature shows is that sleeping continuously throughout the night is very good for memory consolidation because the actual consolidation of memory through the hippocampus happens during sleep. Another way to do this is through exercise. Exercise is very, very important. I don't know if you guys are exercising every day, but make it a habit. Make sure you do it at the same time every day so your brain is sort of looking forward to it. There's no surprise there. I work out every day seven times a week in the morning right after I wake up. I wake up around 5 a.m., I have my Afro-D, which is a supplement that I created. I do that first thing in the morning, and then I sit and I do my work uh, for Afro-D, which is a company I own. I, I look at the Slack messages. I look at uh, different coaches that have asked me questions. I look at our uh, members-only Facebook group, which you can also become a part of if you'd like, Afro-D Nation. I look at that. And then around 6.45, I go get coconut water. Uh, uh, from Antonio. Actually, we, we give him the glass um, so he can fill up the coconut into glass because we don't want to take plastic because plastic is very toxic and poisonous. So we, we don't deal with plastic at all. So we give him the glass in the morning and then we go straight to the gym to work out. We do a cold plunge uh, three times. I do it three times every day, do breath work and then do our workouts. And so Exercising is a way you can increase your hippocampal volume and remem remember things better. And the third way is by doing something over and over. So you saw that with the London taxi drivers, with the New York taxi drivers, the fact that they were doing something over and over 
which is remembering something, going around, looking at different directions, taking a left, taking a right, you know, looking at different streets. The fact that they were doing that increased their hippocampal volume through repetition. So if you really want to learn something well, keep doing it over and over and over. And that comes back to the story, the main learning lesson that I got from Altman, from Michael Kaplan, from Dr. Rakic, and, and obviously the guy who saved them, Dr. Fernando Noromo. And the main message is, don't be a pussy when you believe in something, when you discover something and you, when you believe in something, don't be a pushover. Don't just give up because someone tells you that you're wrong, right? Don't just give up when someone says that your finding or your belief is incorrect because nobody knows anything, right? Nobody really knows anything. Science changes all the time, right? Today we believe something, tomorrow we'll believe something else. Today we find something, tomorrow we'll find the opposite. All right, my PhD uh, supervisor, Dr. Chris Pack, he always used to tell me, he's like, Farhan, doesn't matter what you find in your research, I'm going to figure out a way to back it up with previous science. But if you find the opposite, I'm going to find a way to back that up with previous science. The main sort of learning experience here is that when you believe something, keep doing it over and over. Don't let someone else's opinion of you shift your mindset or make you do something different. Keep going, brother, whatever you're up to. Keep exercising. Keep waking up early, sleeping early. Keep getting the eight hours of sleep every night. Get it continuous. Don't take breaks. You know, don't keep waking up at night. Figure it out. Make it a priority. Sleeping at the same time every day, waking up at the same time every day. Not five days a week, not six days a week, seven days a week. Make it a habit. Work out every single morning and work out hard. Do your stretching. Do something you love. Let me tell you something about how memory becomes worse. It's through stress. What they found is when you undergo chronic stress, which is stress that you have every single day, right? Traffic jams, paying mortgages, uh, relationship issues, parent issues, like whatever. Career issue, money issues. When you have these issues every day, chronic st stress builds up and your glucocorticoid levels, your cortisol levels increase. And that increase is what will decrease your hippocampal volume. You will remember things less because of the stress that you have. And even your emotional memories, you want a little bit of stress, right? You want a little bit of excitement. Like in the morning, if you do a cold bath or ice bath or a cold shower, or you do something out of the ordinary that you, you give yourself a challenge. That stress actually helps your memory formation. That's called acute stress. But chronic stress, which is something you have all the time, right? Like a PTSD stress, that's going to be worse on your memory formation. So try to keep your stress as low as possible. And if you want a community to help you, some brothers like me, like you, people who are really like-minded and want to improve the world and want to give love to the world and, and give it our all, then join my Facebook community called Afrodi Nation. It is free to join. You can join right away. The guys there, the, the, the posts that we have, the inspirational videos, the workout videos, the, the challenges that we post. It's really, really inspiring. It's, it's literally the number one community online. So I urge you to join the Facebook group Afrodi Nation. That's how where I am. You can communicate with me. You can talk to me. I, I'm there 24-7. There's five full-time coaches that I've hired that you can literally access for free. These are health coaches. Uh, Andre, Jameson, Mike, Eitan, and Josh. So I urge you to join our Facebook community. If you're interested in Afro D, which is a supplement that I've been taking for the last five years, every single one of these videos is fueled by Afro D. And I've been taking Afro D every day for the last five years. You can go down below, access that link in the description, get you some Afro D right away. I would love for you to try that out. 365 day money back guarantee. And you can see all the testimonials. You can Google it. You can YouTube it. Uh, all social media, you can Instagram it. It's it's, it's all over the world. Over 50,000 men are taking it. They're very happy. Lots of great reviews on Trustpilot and, and YouTube videos and you know you name it. Everything is there. Yeah, man, that was the video for today. Keep at it. Keep doing amazing for yourself, for your family, for your community. And uh, comment below about what have you been doing to increase your memory formation? 
how have you been able to remember things better to master things in life, right? Become really, really good at things. What are the main techniques that you've been using? I would love to know. And if there are some obstacles that you have to sleeping early, to working out every day, to mastering a technique, to become the best in the world at something, what is that? Uh, let me know that obstacle and I'll do my best to solve it. Post in our Facebook group. And uh, that's it, man. That's all I have for you today. Have an amazing day today and I'll see you next time.